before we get to uh, the, the question on the banks and, and the macro discussion, Tron, I want you to just wrap up um, the quarter and the performance for us. Uh, is it good enough for you? Are you happy with the results? Well, we're, uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, we are really, really happy with this. Well, it's just one quarter, right? And we're a very long-term investor, so uh, be that as it may. But uh, we really saw after a, uh, a, a, a weak year for us last year, uh, we we're re really happy to see first quarter bounce back. We even saw it in the fourth quarter last year. Uh, so 5.9% uh, as we measure our returns is, uh, is a really strong re result. It's uh, up there uh, almost top 10 of our quarters over 27 years. And in uh, monetary terms, it's the second best quarter we ever had. That's a nominal result, right? Because inflation has been pretty strong lately, so real results are a little bit more painful. What is your view on the inflation picture right now and the central bank path going forward? Yeah, well, we don't. We, we sit within a central bank, right? So we're a little bit cautious of our opinions around that. But uh, obviously, uh, inflation is not good for a, uh, a an investor, uh, and so we have been concerned about this. Uh, and now, of course, uh, central banks around the world have taken uh, arguably drastic measures to uh, to uh, to address that. Uh, and that, of course, you know, is, is a, a, again good for a very long term investor with uh, higher interest rates because it kind of gives a, a ceiling, uh, sorry, a, a floor to, to our returns going forward. Uh, but in the meantime, it's, of course, uh, painful. And we saw that last year with the uh, negative return both on our equities and bonds. And that uh, mm. has been the opposite this, year, this quarter. Trond, I know that your CEO has recently talked about the exposure you had to, to SVB. I don't know if you can give us any numbers around what damage that did to you, even though the, the quarter, as you say, turned out in a way that you're happy with. Um, it, he also was talking about how it's important to put resources into finding rotten apples, so businesses that you don't want to have exposure to. I wonder what that means. How do you go about finding those rotten apples? Yeah, well, uh, you know, our starting point is that we are uh, essentially a very broadly diversified investor. We have more than 9,000 equity holdings and we, we stay pretty close to a starting point, which is our uh, benchmark index that's given to us. Now, um, we have also undertaken quite significant uh, efforts over the last, say, uh, actually 10 years and intensified over the last years to make sure that, you know, even though we are largely invested uh, as broadly as the index, uh, there are certain companies with certain practices uh, that just doesn't make sense for us to be uh, exposed to. Uh, so we have uh, great monitoring uh, and trying to, uh, you know, take out those, uh, call them rotten apples if you want. Uh, now, particularly or specifically with the uh, uh, SVB, uh, we weren't, you know, in any shape or form harmed by that. That uh, thermal, nor specifically in SVB, nor in the in the regional banks in in in, uh, in the US. So, so no, we we we're uh, we're taking uh, measures to make sure that we can uh, mm. can see if we can take out some of these uh, less good companies. Okay. And clearly, we saw all of the turmoil around the uh, the collapse and, and takeover of Credit Suisse as well, Trond. Uh, so bringing it back to Europe, but broadly around the banking sector, has this changed your view on banking or uh, the the level of detail you want to see from banks that you have exposure to? What, what have you taken away from this particular episode? No, I th you know I think you know. Um... You know, I, jo I joined the fund 15 years ago, just before the financial crisis, and a lot of things were put in place, regulatory requirements and so forth, that I think uh, makes uh, for a more robust financial system uh, as we have it today. And I think what we saw wasn't really a credit uh, event in any shape or form, it was more liquidity. Uh, and poor risk management, if, to be honest. Uh, and of course, you might uh, need to expect to see that when you have such uh, such uh, rapidly uh, and forcefully increasing interest rates. Not everybody is prepared for that. Tron, can I go back to the SVB uh, issue and just ask, because our reporting shows you had a $160 million equity stake in SVB just before the collapse, about 100 um million dollars in bonds. I get that this is small potatoes compared to the um, amount of assets under management you have, but when you say your portfolio wasn't harmed by SVB, do you mean that you're going to recover that investment? 
No, I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a broader picture, right? Uh, so you had uh, SVB in particular, but there were other banks as well. So, you know, we do active management of our portfolio. And what I'm saying is that, you know, from that, if you, if you kind of want to uh, uh, bring fence it to the regional banks in the U.S., uh, we paired pretty well through that, uh, that turmoil. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Uh yeah, I think also your business has been talking about getting more exposure to private equity. I understand at the moment you have stocks, bonds, real estate, um, renewables assets, and private equity is a bit of a talking point. What is it about private equity do you want to get exposure to? And would that be only uh, listed private equity because of the transparency that would come with that? Um, well, yes, you know, uh, it would not be only listed uh, private equity. That would kind of uh, maybe a little bit defeat the purpose. So this is uh, the way that work, it works here in, 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 our, in our fund is that we take uh, great caution to evaluate how we best can position the fund for the really, really long term. And what we've seen are some uh, developments in the listed markets where you know fewer companies choose to list. Uh, the ones that choose to list, they're typically uh, larger, older, meaning that more of the value creation has happened before it comes to the exchange. And so we're seeing that trend and we believe that it's a long term, uh, more kind of a trend to, 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 to continue. Uh, and uh, hence, uh, we think it makes a lot of sense for, uh, for a long term fund to, to also capture some of that value creation. I mean, uh, and then we we're talking unlisted and uh, many are concerned about the illiquidity. But, you know, uh, this fund is, is certainly well positioned to, to stomach uh, uh, illiquidity. Trond, what is your, speaking of illiquidity, what is your view on the risk um, posed by commercial real estate, especially, you know, the need to refinance, especially here in the U.S.? I have investors writing in all the time asking about, you know, um, how worried they should be when it comes to the CRE maturity wall of $500 billion a year. Um, it sounds very scary. What's, what's your take? Uh, we don't have a particular view on that. I mean, uh, obviously, it is some, it, the good thing is that everybody's aware of this, right? Uh, and so I think it's also, you know, you have to remember it's it's in both the interest, I believe, of the banks and the uh, and the uh, and the borrowers to find good solutions, right? Nobody is uh, is uh, is better off if, if something bad happens. So so I think, you know, um, obviously, it's a it's a big challenge, but I think it's something that can be uh, be worked through.